Welcome to this third installment in our series on muscular dystrophies. In the previous segment, we discussed the most common and well understood of the muscular dystrophies, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which results from mutation to the dystrophin gene. In this segment, we introduce you to Becker muscular dystrophy, a separate class of muscular dystrophy that also affects the dystrophin gene. So how does this work? How can two different mutations to a single gene result in two different forms of a disease? To answer this question, we'll dive a little further into the concept of missense and nonsense mutations and how they relate to these two different conditions. We'll then highlight how the two conditions have similar pathophysiology with muscle tissue, but over different time spans. We'll start with the concept of silent missense and nonsense mutation, using the following sentence to characterize the effects. Notice that the sentence is made up of a series of three-letter words, so that each word can be thought of as a codon. Unlike the genetic code, however, we won't limit ourselves to the four bases of the genomic alphabet. This first sentence represents the message in its native form, as it was meant to be presented. Silent mutations are those that alter the genetic code with no overall effect on protein structure. Examples would be base substitutions that alters one codon to one that codes for the same amino acid, or to an amino acid with a near identical chemical property. In the example here, a base substitution results in a small typo that doesn't affect the pronunciation of the word, and so doesn't affect the overall meaning of the sentence. In missense mutations, a functional protein is still created, but the mutation alters the structural conformation and function of the protein to some degree. This could be a base pair substitution for an amino acid that alters a local region of protein folding, or a base pair insertion or deletion towards the end of the reading frame that alters the C-terminus to some extent. In the example given, the sentence still makes sense, but a base pair substitution has an impact on the overall meaning of the message. In nonsense mutation, the mutation results in no functioning protein, or a protein so poorly folded that it no longer is able to serve any function within the cell. This is the typical result with a base pair insertion or deletion early on in the reading frame. In the example given, deleting a letter alters the reading frame and there is no longer a clear message remaining. In the case of proteins, it could be a completely misfolded protein, the generation of a premature stop codon, or a localization domain that prevents the protein from arriving to its target destination. Duchenne muscular dystrophy results from any of a number of nonsense mutations that results in the complete absence of any functional dystrophin protein within the cell. As described in the previous segment, this results in repetitive bouts of damage and repair that quickly exhaust the fiber's regenerative abilities and leads to signs and symptoms early in life. Cases of Becker muscular dystrophy typically involve one of a number of missense mutations. In these cases, a complete or near-complete dystrophin protein is generated and assembled within the dystrophin-associated glycoprotein complex, but the mutation will have some degree of effect on the structure and function of the protein. This results in a certain degree of destabilization of the complex and a greater degree of damage than what is seen in a normal complex. Therefore, we see a similar pathophysiology to Duchenne muscular dystrophy with the appearance of variable-sized regenerating muscle fibers and ultimately connective tissue infiltrate in the same muscles affected by DMD, but over a longer period of time. The rate of progression is highly dependent on the specific nature of the mutation and the degree of destabilization of the dystrophin-associated glycoprotein complex. Becker and Duchenne muscular dystrophies can be thought of as existing on a continuum. Those with the most rapid onset would be classified as Duchenne muscular dystrophy, while those with a more moderate progression would be more appropriately classified as Becker muscular dystrophy. Diagnostic tests can assist with the distinction. Creatine kinase levels tend to be attenuated in Becker muscular dystrophy, and dystrophin levels tend to range between 30 and 80 percent of normal whereas levels in Duchenne muscular dystrophy are below the 5th percentile. This leaves quite a gray area, and many in the field have proposed the addition of an intermediate form to bridge a gap between clear-cut examples of one form or the other. 
If you were to try and characterize a typical patient with Becker muscular dystrophy, they would start to experience symptoms around the age of 11, tend to remain ambulatory well into their 20s, and will live into their 40s before succumbing to either respiratory or cardiac failure. The prevalence of Becker muscular dystrophy is about one-tenth that of Duchenne. This is likely due, at least in part, to the fact that the majority of mutations have a catastrophic effect on dystrophin structure. There are also likely a number of minor mutations that have minimal effects and may go undiagnosed. That concludes our discussion for Becker muscular dystrophy. In the upcoming segments, we're going to start looking at other forms of muscular dystrophy that result from mutations to proteins other than dystrophin. We'll start in the next session with a family of dystrophies that all have the same pattern of muscle weakness despite affecting a variety of different proteins. These are the limb girdle muscular dystrophies.